got Magum Knack here with you on Birds 365 and joining us with his Nike something shirt. It's a little clip there. You're going to have to tell us what you got on today. Bandy? Is that Bandy? Anna, uh, where where'd you get that in the gift shop? We know you didn't attend Vanderbilt. I like to switch it up for you, Jody. I know that you've now taken a liking to my different gear. I do. I have a, That's why I'm asking. Yeah, I have a different um, T-shirt for every college campus that I have visited. Nice. Uh, is that a, a an ode to Jordan Matthews while, when you were down in, in No, Vanderbilt. I was at the Music City Bowl when Eli oh, Manning right. was a freshman he came into a game against West Virginia. West Virginia is up like 38 nothing, and Eli Manning's on the bench. They bring him into the game, and he darn near brought him back to win the game. And I was in Nashville at the time. I like walking college campuses, and I happened to walk Vanderbilt. But, but, but real quick, since we've gone down this wormhole, favorite college campus you've ever – and you can't say West Virginia. Oh, wow. I've been to a lot of college campuses. Yeah, my cool. Lord. Um my favorite, well, I, I, I've been to Yale like two or three times. That campus is beautiful. It's unbelievable. Um, you know, I, I recently, my girlfriend went to East Carolina, and it is, I walked that campus and said, the difference between East Carolina and Morgantown, West Virginia, it was just like, holy mackerel. Like, it was just all new and upgraded and redone. Whereas I haven't been to Morgantown since I left. But by the way, Jody, I didn't leave them hanging. I brought my West Virginia mug for you today. Okay, Look at very, that. Good, very good. But, um, but the campus has not been – I have not been there since I left, really. I hear the campus looks a lot different. And um, by the way, the correct answer to that always, if you haven't been there, why go there, Pepperdine. Okay. I don't know how anybody gets anything done at Pepperdine. It is well, I'm a Northeasterner, man. I'm like the old architect, yeah. Yale. No, I've been to Brown. You. I've been to Princeton. Um, you know, th those kind of old architects are, are my style. Yeah, I think I could learn to appreciate Pepperdine. Never been, but something tells me if I got there, I'd warm up to it. Um, how far was West Virginia from Slippery Rock? Not far. Probably our... 45 to two it's like up in like outside of pittsburgh right now i was thinking you could do it in less than two hours did you ever make it to that campus i did not go to slippery rock when i was in morgantown but my when i was in high school my friend's sister went there and i was i went to help her move in oh, okay. wow. so you were on the campus but that was oh, before you 19. were on your that this was before you were on your uh, t-shirt buying yeah. binge I, I was, this is 1989 or something. I might have been in middle school, actually. <laughs> uh, you, we, we know that Mike Gill would have outgrown that middle uh, school t-shirt. Right, <laughs> right now, that, that one's pretty much a given. All right, uh, let's get to the birds. I asked John this question. I, I get your take on it. Uh, he's, a, he's a beat guy, so he's there every single day. He knows. I, is there a secret we're not figuring out about the Eagles' pre-draft visits? Is there something with who they've asked and the timing that they've had them in either early, either late, or guys who haven't been asked in at all, who everybody in the world has them at least considering in a mock? Is there anything we're missing on the Eagles' pre-draft visits? That's funny you ask that because we discussed this yesterday in light of, you know, we were talking about Mel Kuyper's mock and he had them trading to draft a running back Jamar Gibbs in the second round. They obviously have brought Bajon Robinson in. Now, I was trying to remember the last time they brought a running back in for a visit, and Jeff Kerr tells me it was Miles Sanders was the last running back. He wasn't 100% sure, but he thinks they brought Miles Sanders in, who they ended up drafting. So by that proxy, would you say they brought one running back in, the last time they brought a running back in, they also drafted that guy. They don't normally visit with a running back. So the fact that they're visiting with one, are they playing their hand a little bit? Now, of the 16 or so players they have brought in, 12 of them have been offensive or defensive linemen. So if you're trying to find something we've missed, Jody, they did bring in one running back. When they brought a running back in in the past, they drafted him. 
Um, they brought in Darius Geis, as I often bring up, and they did not draft him uh, because he was reported to be yelling at Did he get into a, a verbal exchange yeah. with a coach or something? Uh, well, that was the report. I don't believe that report. I've said, you know, it's the, the, re, the report, which he's denied, the Eagles have denied, that he was yelling at Deuce Staley. And I told Jody that story, and I was like, well, if he's yelling at Deuce Staley, he's not, that's not going to work out too well so but it was an indication where i i mentioned to jody i think the assumption is when you bring people in you 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 automatically like them it always goes well there's an indication where you can bring somebody in and it doesn't go well and you take them off your board because they really liked him as a player um and the Eagles look at running backs i mean you know they've drafted guys in the second round you mentioned miles they they were had a lot of interest in Dalvin Cook, which was 2017, the same year they had interest in Christian McCaffrey. So they really wanted a running back back then. Um, it, it, it's not that they don't like running backs. They're well. It just starts in the second round. So forget about the first round. Forget about it. Um, well, and, and I guess you can to answer Jody's point of the question is. There is a possibility, I guess, that nobody wants to draft a running back in the first round, and this running back falls to the second round because of what we're talking about. No one wants to draft one in the first round. I don't see that happening, but I guess you do your homework in the event that it does happen. You know, it's funny because so many people have hyped up the Bijan thing, and I know people are so excited about it. And Peter King amped it up this week, and I was – just texted somebody before the show came on the air. And I said, what, what am I missing here? Is this guy so good that, you know, he translates the normal Eagles level of thinking. And this is somebody who worked with Howie. Uh, I'll be ice skating in hell when that happens. That was his direct quote. <laughs> ice skating in hell. Right. So but there's you, your... you, John, you can tell it. Can you tell us? That how he would have taken McCaffrey if he had the chance. Yes, he so, would have. So you can't just say how he is from the day he got the big chair. Devalue running back second there's, round. There's, Don't there's, ever mention running back in first round in the same sentence with me. Except he would have taken McCaffrey if he had the chance. And the exception proves the rule. And the difference right. about, as I said, and the difference about Christian McCaffrey. Well, there's a couple differences when you compare it to now. One. As I mentioned yesterday on the show, he's a generational prospect when it comes to pass catching. And it was a different phase of the Eagles. Uh, uh, it was Doug Peterson as the head coach. It was Carson Wentz as the quarterback. It was a quarterback who, although he was mobile, not like Jalen Hurts, he needed the traditional running back. Everybody needs that pass catching running back. I argue if Kenny Gainwell's on the chargers or whatever, he catch 50, 60 balls a year. They don't need it here. So they don't tend to use it. Um, it it's different with Jalen. Um, and that was from a completely different uh, source. The, the, the thing on Jalen, which I brought up time and time again, and as you know, Jody, and I'll throw it at Mike, you know, why Jalen Hurts makes quarterback makes running backs exponentially better. The quote was 10 times better. Why, why you, why are you buying a sports car to drive to McDonald's? That, that, that was, he elevates running backs. You can get it done with Trey Sermon. Forget about Rashad Penn if he stays healthy. You can get it done with Kenny Gainwell. You can get it done with Boston Scott. You've seen it. Why? And remember, on top of it, if you take Bijan Robinson at 10, you're missing out on a... Now, the three players the Eagles want are defensive players, and they probably can't get any of them. And it's Jalen Carter. Um, I shouldn't say can't get... Nolan Smith, they could potentially get and the kid from Texas Tech. So I should say, I don't think they're going to be in a position to get two of the three. Um, Nolan Smith, we'll see. I think they'd prefer to trade down a little bit at that point. But again, you got to have two to tango. Um, 
And then you start talking about the offensive line. I mean, if Paris Johnson falls, who knows? If somebody like that falls. So you're not only – you're missing out on, on that value of that pick at a position that they think is really, really important and Howie Roseman's all about the valuation. So why are we talking about B. John Robinson? Yeah, this, there was a time, Jody Mack, I was a young intern on the Mack and Mack show, and I believe at that time... You still they were, that, huh? Out loud you say that? You, <laughs> it was a good time in my life, uh, 1998, to uh, date us both. Um, and I believe the time the show was championing to draft a Texas running back by the name of Ricky Williams. Ooh. Wasn't and, the only show. That was that was, it was well, not was, the only that, show. That was ninety. Did you say ninety eight? That was ninety nine. Because I know it's a ninety nine yeah. draft. Because that's when Donovan McNabb was ninety nine. Yeah, somewhere in that time. Food on the stage. Yes. His first yes. ever uh, yeah. action with a and, Philadelphia hometown football crowd. Then the dirty. And he never. Dirty and he never in. got over it. By the here way, is, here is here is a nugget for you and the audience. Yours truly's one of his intern tasks from David Helfrich. There's a name for you there, Jody oh, Mack. I missed David. I was, assigned, I was assigned to call the Dirty 30 and say, hey, Dirty Joe or whatever your name is, you must be at the bus at this <laughs> time Joe. to drive up to New York City. So I called the 30 men who booed. So I always felt, because I was a big McNabb guy, I wanted them to draft McNabb and – but they they were everybody wanted them to draft a running back that year. And if they would have drafted Ricky Williams, I don't think that would have worked out all that well for them. I think they made the right pick. So for the everybody who fantasizes about what this running back would do to this offense, it probably is just that a fantasy of what this offense may look like. They are probably better off taking or going down the road that they generally go down where they know the best. I do understand the fans. Like yesterday, I asked John, if they draft Peter Stronsky with the 10th pick in the draft, no one's going to be excited. But my question is, does that mean he's the ultimate, the ult, the starter at right guard and Cam Jurgens goes back to being the heir apparent to Jason Kelsey? Because then I would ask this question. Who drafts a right guard at number 10? Isn't that a reach to draft a guard? Now, he may be the heir apparent to play tackle down the road, but many people think his best position is guard. So you're telling me you have the 10th pick in the draft and you're taking a guard. That's why I think it is hard for people to kind of comprehend is you got this guy who's way up on everyone's draft boards, one, two, three, four, five, somewhere in there, and you're going to take a right guard. That just doesn't feel right. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, and Jody brought up Christian McCaffrey, and there's so I think when people bring out bring up the outliers like Quentin Nelson, I mean, exactly uh, where I was going, but, Johnny Mac. Yeah. Nobody he complains about Quentin Nelson. The draft, the and nobody, was drafted, yeah, I mean, I. but but Peter Skaronsky isn't Quentin Nelson. That's so, you know, you're right, but they're not drafting him to be a right guard. He'll probably play right guard to start, but they're drafting him to be the heir apparent to Lane Johnson, who, you know, told Ed Kratz and I, you're just thinking about two more years, that's it. Uh, and if that's the case, you need you need the heir apparent to Lane Johnson as well. well. It's, but we've talked about it before, you know, they if they drafted Lane Johnson to be the heir apparent to the left tackle. Yes, well, right. here we are, you know, ten yeah. years later, and he has never moved to left yeah. tackle. Well, and that's uh, they the drafted, thing. They drafted but, Landon Dickerson to be the heir apparent to Jason Kelsey. Well, guess what? They now have a left guard for the next ten years. Right, and everybody's happy with Lane Johnson, even though the plan didn't work out. Why? Because he's a really good player, uh, Hall of Fame player, by right. the way. Um, Everybody's happy with Landon Dickerson. Why? Because he's a really good player. If Peter Skaronsky is a really good player, whether it's right guard, right tackle, down the road, no one's going to care if he's a really good player. They're going to say, oh, the Eagles are the best offensive line in football, and Skaronsky is going to be in pro bowls and all pros, and then it's all peaches and cream. But in the moments, it's about instant everybody, gratification. 
Yes, everybody every year wants the skill guys. I mean, they want they want the guys they see. They want the guys that touch the football. They want the guys that score touchdowns or defensively sack the quarterback or make interceptions. It's boring to take a uh, – it was boring last year with Jordan Davis to take a, a run stuffer at number 12 overall. Uh, 13, sorry. Um now, if he turns into Hello Di Nada and he makes five all pro teams, they're going to be just fine. Mm-hmm. If he doesn't, they're not going to be just fine. It's the way it is every year. Yeah, I got no problems if they take Skoransky and he starts at guard, but then eventually moves to tackle and they move beef jerky it, it, back to again in Stoutland. We trust as long as they've got Stoutland to coach him up, make him better give him flexibility and make the final decision. Yeah, he, he'll get it right. You have to have faith in him. I right, the Eagles have to get it right at number 10, and I'm seeing everybody with their projected trades up, down, sideways. Up! I'm seeing up! Jonathan Gannon going to do a deal with his buddy, his former coach, head coach, and talk the general manager into trading the pick with the Eagles. Arizona open for business at number three. You don't really see the Eagles moving all the way up to three, do you? Out of number 10, Mike Gill? Not at all. No, especially, no, you know. Neither do I. But, but people are talking about They're speculating on that, that because Howie is such a Monty Hall, let's make a deal guy, that he must be included in the conversation to move up to number three just because Jonathan Gannon used to be the Eagles defensive coordinator. I mean, if you told me this was next year's draft and they had a plethora of all these mid-round picks that they could use to kind of – but they don't have anything in this year's draft to be able to move up to get that far. Uh, That's a a big jump to go from 10 to 3 without anything in the middle of the rounds. I actually, you know, think that one of the – you know, everybody keeps talking about 10, 10, 10, moving back, or you just mentioned up. But that 30 pick we discussed a little bit yesterday – now that there's a fifth quarterback into the mix, you know, a lot of people now talk about Hendon Hooker being a first-round pick. That's five quarterbacks. The Eagles did this a couple of years ago when Lamar Jackson was on the board. They traded out of that spot with Baltimore and moved and got extra picks in the second round. That would be something I think you could see happening more so than what you're talking about, going from 10 all the way up to three. Um the only way I see them possibly moving up is if Jalen Carter started to get into the eight, nine range and they felt like we have a shot. We got to do this. Other than that, I think the more realistic thing is at 30, if there's a fifth quarterback on the board and teams behind them say, Hey, we want that fifth year option on that quarterback. Let's call Philadelphia. They've been known to move out of that spot and they have no mid round picks. We'll give them some twos, some threes and let them load back up a little bit so I would think it's more everybody keeps talking about 10 I think it's more possible that they stay at 10 and move 30 than it is move 10 and stay at 30 well I'll tell you why I'll play devil's advocate I'll tell you why people say that and by the way one of those six teams is the Eagles that called Arizona but that's just the way how he does business he always wants to know what's going on so I wouldn't you know put too much on that he calls everybody. Um, and he's certainly going to call the team where, you know, Jonathan Gannon is a big part of it. Um, but th- th- the major reason they're not going to be able to trade up with Arizona, well, there's a number of reasons. But one, somebody's going to trade up to get a quarterback. And when you trade up to get a quarterback, you got to pay a premium. You got to pay more. The Eagles wouldn't be going up to get a quarterback. They'd be going up to get a defensive player, either uh, Will Anderson or Tyree uh, Wilson. So they'd be going up to get that and they wouldn't want to pay the quarterback premium. So it's going to be very, very difficult. But I would say it's more likely how he trades up than he drafts a running back at number 10. I would say that for this reason. He's very bold. If they fall in love with a player and that player would have to be probably Wilson, maybe Anderson, um, if they fall in love with a player and they say, all right, this guy is so good. We're in a position that we shouldn't be in as NFC champions. And we have a chance to get a generational player. He would do that. He's bold. 
He did it in 2016. We, we, you know, if you think about Carson Wentz, he's just coming back. Dave Zangaro brought this up on the show earlier this week. It was a good point. Generally, if you come back and you're, first of all, it never happens, right? You fire, you get fired as a general manager, you're gone. And if he got a raise and got an unlimited travel budget, but then he was brought back and you would think the natural sort of way to do things would be, all right, I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to, I'm just going to, nope. He went from 13 to eight and then two to get Carson Wentz and whether people want to talk about it now and play hindsight shelf life was way too small, but it worked. They got, they got one Super Bowl, and he was a big part of it, whether people want to admit that or not. He is very bold. If he sees a player that he wants and, and thinks is so much better than everybody else, he, he, he's more likely to go up than do anything else. But there's John, a lot of hurdles. There. Let, let, let me uh, ask you, the way you stated it, do you like Wilson better than Will Anderson? Because you said it would more likely happen for Wilson and Anderson. Well, I, mean, I you think Wilson's I've a better heard, player than Anderson? I've heard people. First of all, I, number two things there. I'm not talking about number three because again, people are going to pay the premium for the quarterback. Um, so it would be a different move up. Um, so it would be less of a move up. I don't think Anderson would be there, number one. But okay. the reason I say that is because uh, it's sort of like Zach Wilson. I, I keep hearing Wilson's name with the Eagles, with the Eagles. I think part of that is the assumption, well, they can't get Anderson. Um, so it's not worth discussing. Um, so that's sort of the reason. But as I said, if he wants to make the really bold move, go up to three and take Will Anderson, insert any name you want. If he says, all right, this kid is so good. We're not in this position. We're not going to be in this position because we have a good quarterback. We shouldn't be in this position. He will be bold. He will be bold more than going in the other direction. Um, very unlikely. I'm not saying it's likely, but that's why people talk about it. Well, being bold enough <laughs> – that if the running back's the highest rated player on his board, he would take him? No, but because <laughs> not that that's bold. Not, different, yeah, different kinds of bold that we're talking that's about not, here. That's not his version of bold. That's his version of stupidity because oh, the I, I agree. Of the throw, I, I think it's funny. But I would say, John, if you asked X amount of town evaluators, what would the average big board placement be for him in your mind? Who, uh, Bijan Robinson? Yeah, I've talked of like just to kind of get a feel of what level of guys we're talking uh, about. I, I had Am Emery Hunt, who does a lot of scouting, because we talked to him on the show. So now it's nine, and Emery's the only one that doesn't have him in the top eight players, which are top blue eight. chip players. Um, okay. I'm not, you will never hear me say B. John Robinson is not a blue chip prospect. I'm telling people the Eagles aren't taking them. That's, that's the Eagles valuation um, yeah. of that particular. Oh yeah. Position. Listen, I think we're all in agreement on how the Eagles think. I'm just trying to give the viewers a insight on this is the decision that they're going to have to come down to. You have a guy that many people will have, probably as high as number two on their big board, maybe even number one, and maybe not as uh, no lower than number eight. So when you're the 10th team, I just try to go inside that room and say, here's our draft board. This guy is clearly at the top and it's not close. What do we do? All right. So let me put it to both you guys this way, since we're still, and we're going to be doing it for two weeks leading right up to the draft. Bijan Robinson still going to be a conversation, and Bijan here in Philadelphia, and Howie Roseman's valuation of running backs. If I told you that Bijan Robinson was going to have Ezekiel Elliott's career, and we can now put a demarcation on Ezekiel Elliott because he's no longer with the Cowboys. I still think he wants to go back to the Cowboys. That's a whole nother story. He saved that yeah. for another day after the draft's over and done with. But he signs his rookie deal. He signs his extension. It gets too expensive. They find Tony Pollard, and he surpasses Zeke in his ability. So they decide to sever ties and let Zeke go. 
Zeke's had the career that he's had. If I tell you that B. John Robinson does exactly what Ezekiel Elliott does production wise, salary wise, be a little bit less because Zeke was the number three overall pick, I believe. And uh, he'd be starting at 10 if the Eagles took him at 10. If I told you you were getting Ezekiel Elliott's career out of B. John Robinson, does that not merit the 10th pick in the draft? Probably, yeah. I mean, I, I know if his production the first couple of years, if you had that guy, I mean, you had 1,600 yards, 1,400 yards, you know, 15 touchdown guy. If you got those years for three seasons, uh, three or four seasons, I think you're probably adding a weapon that this – look, I understand totally what John is saying, what he does for running backs. But I would say this, in the Super Bowl game, their running backs gave him about buckus. You know, they, they they got nothing from the running backs in that in – that, in, basically in the playoffs, they didn't get much from their running backs. I guess the well, Kenny, wonder Kenny, – Kenny Gainwell had the big game against the Giants. That was it. That was the only, yes, only in a big game that was, game they had. Yeah. But I guess the question and the wonder is what what a top – now, I don't know. What is Miles Sanders? Is he a top-level running back? Did he just look good because he was in this offense? Um, is he a upper-tier back? What would, like, Saquon Barkley in this offense look like? I've had people tell me that Robinson is comparable to a Saquon Barkley type of runner. Yeah, I, I don't go there. Um. I, I think to Jody's question, I, I mean, personally for this team, no, I, I don't think I wouldn't. I don't think Ezekiel Elliott's career, Saquon Barkley's career, insert name you want to. I don't think it's worth the number 10 pick for this team at this time because of the quarterback. Um, don't need it. Um, and, and you can bring up the outliers and they played poorly in the Super Bowl, um, not only defensively, but as you mentioned, Miles Sanders from play one hurt himself, uh, you know, kicking the ball outside, went to all the bad habits and hurt himself. Uh, they didn't play well. Um, but overall, the larger sample size to me is the more important one. And he elevates running backs. It's, it's, it's not even a question mark. Um, and that's why I always bring up that counterintuitive argument, you know, I don't want to hand the ball. I don't want to turn around and hand the ball off to, to, to B. John Robinson. I think that limits what the Eagles do well offensively. I think you make it easier for the defense. Um, well, the one so thing, I think they're the different one thing, now, but here's what I'll say, Mike, real quick, and then you can jump in. If it's Derek Carr or somebody like that, yeah, I would take it because they yeah. need that. They need that presence. Well, the Eagles don't need that presence. The one year, Jody, you asked about Zeke Elliott. I think he had like 80 catches, you know, it, it, like the one, his third, 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 he caught the ball a lot early in his career. I think he had like 80 yeah, catches. Yeah, he's a very good player. He's a good pass protector. That is where, that is where I want to see the Eagles offense kind of, maybe it's not the running back that we're talking about that's going to be a great back in terms of, or, or going to be productive. But to add that flair out of the backfield, the guy over the, you know, in the flats and in, out there, that is where I think if you have an outstanding player, you know, where you have a Christian McCaffrey, I'm not, maybe Robinson's not at quite at that level, but he can catch the football. He can make people miss. He doesn't go down on the first hit. What does that add to this offense? But maybe, maybe, and game? I, I, maybe I haven't said this to, I, I should have said it. And I don't know. Tell me if I have or I haven't, Jody. While I always bring up the Eagles would have taken Christian McCaffrey with 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 the 14th pick in 2017, they would have. That's confirmed. I'm not the only one to report it. We're, we're reporting it for a reason. If you could take Christian McCaffrey as a rookie and put him in this draft, they would not. They would not take him because it's different. It's a different coach. It's a different quarterback. It's a different offensive scheme. Why they wanted Christian McCaffrey so badly is what you just talked about, Mike. His ability in the passing game. They knew he can run. He's a great runner. But his ability in the passing game, which is not nearly as important as well with Jalen Hurts because he's not going to dump it off. Derek Carr's got to dump it off. 
or he's going to get sacked or he's going to get two yards or three yards. Jalen Hurts gashes people. It, it, they don't need that player. And remember, you're not only taking the luxury that you don't need, you're missing out on worst case scenario a Peter Skaronsky on top of it. And that's a position the Eagles value. I, but, I, I'm, I'm going to be talking about it for two more weeks. Right. It makes you, no you sense. You will, and I'm going to give you the same response again. Uh, no, I, I don't think I've actually gone there. Here's the thing that I think you're leaving out. I'll play devil's advocate, John, against the, the Eagles don't need the superstar running back because they got Jalen Hurts, and Jalen Hurts is going to take care of his own business. So they don't need to put that kind of resource into the payoff. Let's break it down to its smallest finite spot. Second and six this past year, RPO. The defense is treating Jalen Hurts as the weapon that he is, so they've got to give him the respect. So Jalen Hurts decides to hand the ball off of Miles, and Miles goes for eight and gets the first down and moves the chain. Same exact play, B. John Robinson, defense pays the uh, respect it has to to Jalen Hurts. He goes RPO. He hands it to B. John Robinson. He goes to the house from 45 yards out. Why wouldn't you want something like that? If you're adding that game-breaking back, which Miles wasn't. Miles was very good. Miles ran for what? 1,200 yards. Miles got a whole bunch of first downs. They got it into the red zone. Miles took it to the house. But, but B. What John we, is what that we think is what, back what, what, who's going to score from midfield. What do we think is going to happen here? And by the way, Miles was a home run hitter. I mean, during his career in Philadelphia, he was a big play guy. Now, the one year, uh, he, uh, 20, one year, well, yeah. 2021, he had a really bad year, which was kind of weird. But, um, you know, he's got the most 70, 80 yard runs in, you know, team history. Uh, uh, you know, he's a home run hitter. But just just from the pure money ball standpoint, 1,269 yards and 11 touchdowns. Let's say they do take B. John Robinson at number 10 overall. What the hell are people expecting? Do they think they're going over 2,000 with B. John Robinson? Do they think they're getting 20 touchdowns? What exactly are they expecting? 1,269 and 11 touchdowns. If you take the committee – you're over 1,700 yards. How, how much more do you need before you're taking away what you really do well, which is the quarterback running for 700 and all his touchdowns, which is A.J. Brown going over 1,000 yards, which is Devontae Smith going over 1,000 yards, which was Dallas Goddard dominating. What, what more are you going to get than what you got with Miles Sanders, Kenny Gainwell, and Boston Scott. I don't know what people are expecting. Well, I would say I don't know it's about what are you going to get more. I mean, if you get 1,500 yards, that's not like, whoa, you got a 1,500-yarder back next to a 1,300 yard back. My, my guess would be it's how you're getting those yards and when you're getting them. As we talk about, in big situations, the Eagles had some trouble running the ball. And it, look, you're, this is all big picture winning a Super Bowl. This isn't, hey, I'm grinding out 98 yards against the Arizona Cardinals in week number four. <laughs> Brad Pen uh, uh, Penny could do that. Rashad Penny, you could do that. This is more, how do I get over the hump to the three points I didn't get in that Super Bowl against Kansas City? And if I have this time now, you would say, well, Kansas City had a seventh round pick. Well, just yeah. because he was drafted in the seventh round doesn't necessarily mean he was seven-round talent. He might have the talent of a player that no, exceeded I, his it, draft position. But, and that's the point. Jody's a big uh, Zach uh, Charbonnet fan. I mean, you're going to be able to get a productive back in this draft, and we're going to have Matt Manicharian on in the second hour. He's probably going to talk about how deep this draft is at running back. You're going to be able to get yeah. – if you do your job right, and again, everything's about evaluation, you're going to be able to get that 1,269 yards on this offense with this quarterback in this offensive line. I don't want to say easily because Miles is a good player, but it's not, it's not going to be an insurmountable hurdle, whether it's Rashad Penny, insert third-round pick, 
Kenny Gainwell, Boston Scott, you're going to be able to, to duplicate those 1,700 yards, and you're going to get a big-time defensive player or, or an offensive lineman on what, top of it. What, what I think you're leaving out, John, I know it's – you could almost say it's not fair. What are Eagle fans looking for if they were to upgrade at the running back position? They're looking for more than 45 yards on 17 carries that they got in the Super Bowl from their running backs. I know it's just one game, but it was the most important game and the biggest game of all. And the running backs carried it 17 times for 45 yards. They will talk themselves into that wouldn't have happened if B. John Robinson was the guy that uh, Jalen Hurts well, was but, handing uh, the football can, to. Can Super I also Bowl. say, and that's what, what I hit all- at. It's not yeah, about the if, third week against Arizona. It's about how do we get those three points that we lost by? What 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 are all the, when all those when the game was over? What were all those people complaining about? They weren't complaining about the running game. It would have been nice if the running game performed better. What were they complaining about? Couldn't get a stop. Couldn't Jonathan do this. Gannon, Couldn't yeah, do that. And, and part of that is just the Gannon hatred, and you know it, and I know it, and most everybody knows it. People just hate Janet. Hated should use the proper uh, past well, uh, term. Hated. And, and lastly, guys, keep this in mind. We all know the Eagles are big picture down the road. You know, if you draft Robinson in the first round, you can then trade him with the fifth year option, like Carolina did, and get a bundle of picks back in return, and have the same conversation four years from now. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And I hope I'm wrong. I hope all the people are happy. I hope they get B. John Robinson. But, you know, I actually look, if you're I a betting act, man. I love the conversation because I do me. think it's I think it's more than just an Eagles conversation. It's a football conversation about a running back who's this type of player that nobody wants to draft because of his position. I think it's a really fun conversation. That being said, I agree with you, John. I don't think they're going to take B. John Robinson if they stay at number 10. If they like him, they probably move back to try to get him. But ultimately, the player that I would think they would like to hope falls a little bit is Jalen Carter, and then they would make the move when he, once he gets by a certain number, maybe number five. All right, I'm going to ask you, Mr. Gill, before we let you run, since way back when, with David Helfrich's direction, you had to call people from the Dirty 30 to get them on the bus Ugh. to get them up to New York for the Donovan McNabb draft. Are there enough Eagle fans? to be able to gather a group, get them on a plane to Kansas City. Maybe even Andy Reid lets them stay at his house for the draft two Thursdays from now. What would we call that group? I'll give you two choices. Either the Sporty 40, send them out to Kansas City if they're in love with B. John Robinson, or how about the Filthy 40? To borrow from the Dirty 30, make them the Filthy 40 to go out and cheer on B. John Robinson and boo whoever the Eagles take at number 10. Which name you going with? Sporty 40 or Filthy 40 for this year's draft? It's got to be Filthy 40. I mean, if you're going to if you're going to boo, you got to have some sort of, you know, uh, name that would be a, a dirty name or a derogatory name. The Dirty 30 worked because in the end, it was like this group of guys who went there and booed this guy who turned out to be the best quarterback your franchise ever had. Yeah. If, if kind of kind of the right decision. But, uh, you know, and by the way, that was a different time. Uh, at Mike Gill's show uh, on Twitter, make sure you follow Mike973, ESPN South Jersey, the Sports Bash uh, every weekday, 2 to 6. Uh, I'll be on there later. I'll be in the car, though, Mike, just to warn you. So, yeah, you're getting me in the car today. If Your best a... thoughts sometimes come in the car. That's true. Sometimes they come somewhere else, but <laughs> so... I feel like I might be heading there right brother. now, by the way. <laughs> uh, we'll see what college shirt Mike Gill rolls out for us next week. He'll be back one week from today. MG, always a pleasure. Thanks, bud. See you guys. The Thanks, Mike. Bash, down to short, 97 points. By the way, before we get to break, I, I don't often, but am I a bad communicator, Jody? I get these people. Why does John H 